Hello and welcome back to Cat Talks, the place where I talk about books and reading. Today we'll be talking about my May wrap-up. So May was the month of the Asian Readathon in which I took part and it was also the month of a couple of other readathons so I obviously did the bingo-a-thon to choose which books I wanted to read and you can check that out down below and these are the books that I read in order that I read them so in total I read 16 books during the month of May partly because I was off work for two weeks writing full-time for a week and then I took another week of vacation uh, between jobs so in order to prepare for my new job which I have now started in June uh, so don't feel bad if you didn't hit the heights of 16 books but yes I had a really great time and I hope you guys did too. The first book I read this month was My Brother's Husband by Gengoro Togami. This is a super sweet uh, manga, a collection of two books put together in the English translation about a uh, young man who is trying to raise his daughter as a single father and whose brother's husband turns up on his door um, and the man is forced to you know confront some lingering inner homophobia and can like figure out how to deal with the fact that he pushed his brother away when he found out that his brother was gay. I gave this book a three out of five stars. I felt it was very cute, it was very fluffy and it had some magical realism elements that weren't really explained but I didn't feel like it added that much to the conversation. Now hold your angry pitchforks folks because I'm going to be reviewing My Brother's Husband Volume 2 later on in this uh, video so please don't burn me at the stake just yet. The second book I read this month was Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. This is the story of a young girl who's uh, who gets dragged away from her home and is nearly killed for murdering a pit fighter in the same training village as her but is instead bought by a nun and taught how to kill people. Now she turns out to be one of the red tribes which means she has special abilities when fighting. These aren't any old nuns, these are as I said assassin nuns, they're trained in poisoning and in fighting and in agility and so she's kind of like put the test there to make friends, fit in and kind of like find her place in life. I really didn't enjoy this. It took a long time to get going, the storytelling was quite slow and there wasn't really a cohesive plot through the whole book. Uh, main villains come and go and aren't really resolved properly but this book is very beloved on booktube so if you love it, props to you, if you haven't tried it yet you probably will love it. It just wasn't my cup of tea. The third book I read this month was In the Vanishes Palace by Aliette de Bodard. This is a Beauty and the Beast queer retelling but a young woman who is stolen from her village in repayment for a healing and the dragon who saves her and you know her feelings towards her servant that she shouldn't really be having. This is a slightly different take on the Beauty and the Beast retelling because it is set I believe in Taiwanese culture but it could be Vietnamese, I think it's probably Vietnamese. There is a lot of LGBTQ plus rep including the children that are involved because she's been kind of like hired or stolen, indentured as the children's tutor and there is also kind of like this uh, really cool sci-fi element or fantasy element where the land has been mutated for the amusement of greater beings who have since moved on and left everyone that they previously enslaved, all the humans and things there on this dying planet. I thought this one was really intriguing and really well done but I only gave it three stars because the conclusion lacks something of an oomph for me. It didn't really have that kind of like conflict resolution you think they're gonna fail and they don't. It just didn't have that kind of sparkle but I did think it was a really good short story. I think it's a novella. I think that's what it is. The fourth book I read this month was The Three Body Problem by Chitsin Liu. This was the prompt of read a translated work for the read Asian Readathon as it was originally translated from Chinese and it's the first of a three book series. Mainly we follow a young scientist who is developing nanofiber technology who is recruited by the police to investigate or infiltrate its organization which is believed to be responsible for several scientist suicides. Uh, through the course of this he meets with an old woman who used to be part during China's revolution part of a secret government project to see if they could contact aliens before the US. This is a really unique look at aliens being contacted by Earth, what would happen, things like that and goes into various different theorems. It's very hard science sci-fi, it's very well done, it's really really good but it does lack something of characterization. There are a few character reactions that I was very confused by and um, some of them are very wooden, they don't really have emotion. In fact the only character that you really like is one who kind of like is very disrespectful to everyone else in the novel and at first I didn't like him but he grew on me because he was the only one with a personality. However the way that this novel is done and brought together, the way that it's stitched and embroidered and kind of like all just magic threads come together is just such a beautifully well done tale 
And so if you enjoy sci-fi and you enjoy hard sci-fi in particular, definitely pick this one up. This was recommended to me actually by someone from work, so it was part of my TBR even before I learnt there was an Asian readathon, and I'm really glad that I obeyed them. The fifth book I read this month was The Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie. I gave this book a full star as well. This book is about uh, two young men who are involved in a terrorist attack over London and miraculously survive the very long drop from the plane to the ground. One of them it seems to become an angel and the other one a demon. Salman Rushdie has been condemned for writing this book. It contains several passages that are very insulting to the Islamic faith in general, including the insinuation that Muhammad wrote a couple of verses because he wanted to become a get on side with a businessman. The book is incredibly well written. Salman Rushdie has a way of using language that really evokes feelings and also humour to be honest. He wrote this in a really well-defined way. Um, he played with the language, he, you can really tell the kind of like where the characters are coming from and he is a master of characterization, very different to Xi Shen Liu. However, there were some problems with kind of like remembering where I was in the novel, there are several intersecting timelines. This is very much a literary fantasy, although it is technically a uh, I think it's categorised as speculative fiction or possibly as a magical realism. Really, it is a completely a fantasy. Uh, people change shapes and things like that. But you get to follow lots of people throughout the city of London, mainly immigrants and uh, third generation, second generation, and kind of like see their way of looking at the world. And I thought this was incredibly well done. The sixth book I read this month was Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I gave this one a three star. I thought it was a fairly standard fantasy. This is a story about, I think, a girl called Alina who is whisked away when she discovers that she has magical powers by a man known only as the Darkling. Now she has one of the most rare and unseen magical powers ever in the history and the Darkling tells her that he can use and harness this power in order to repair uh, some damage that was done by a previous Darkling many generations ago. That's all I can really say without spoiling the plot but essentially there is something not quite right at this school that she goes to and we follow her through this journey. Not much happens during this novel. I thought it was okay and I would happily read the second in the book, second in the series even, but yeah, not much happens. Not much movement, really. Uh, there is a twist and it isn't very well signposted either, so uh, I thought it was a very good debut novel, but and I would definitely be interested in reading more by Laid Up Bardugo, but it, you know, it just wasn't very shiny. The seventh book I read was Fangirl. It seemed like a lot of people were rereading Fangirl this month. And this is by Rainbow Rowell. I actually, this is the first time I read it and I actually gave it a five star. Now I've noticed it's quite fashionable nowadays on booktube to say like, oh, she's kind of, you know, acting very much immaturely. And she, you know, some of the choices that she made were kind of like cringy. But honestly, I had kind of the same experience when I went to university. It was the first time I'd really not known anybody um, when kind of like, and I had boarded, you know, I went to boarding school. I lived with people who were not my parents for many years, but going to university is a whole new kettle of fish. And even from the eating in her room stuff, I totally empathize. I could see where she was coming from. And I feel like a lot of people reviewing this book based on like their more mature viewpoints don't really have like maybe forgotten how scary it was to go to university for the first time. And like as adults, they're like, well, of course you'd just go find the dining room. But it wasn't about finding the dining room. For her, it was about everyone looking at her while she tried to figure out where to get the trays and where to put the trays back and things like that. Now that's not a problem for me. That isn't my problem in that kind of situation. Uh, I could definitely empathize with our main char character, Kath. And you know, this, this novel deals with some pretty weighty subjects. The father has a bipolar disorder. The mother is absent and actually abandoned her children at a young age. We have sisters who are growing apart. We have a very like summary romance. We have friends that turn into not quite so much as friends. Um, I thought it, the whole thing was done incredibly incredibly well and I really in really enjoyed this introduction to Rainbow Rowell's work. The eighth book I read was Daisy Jones and the Sixth. Now I actually gave this a four star despite the fact that I didn't really enjoy this book. I thought that it was a very well done, very well researched historical fiction, but I just didn't enjoy it. It wasn't for me. I felt like the main characters were uh, impulsive and they both were very impulsive. They both were very selfish. I felt like the main male character didn't really have a backbone and the twist was cheesy and unnecessary. However, I did really enjoy the, the way that the main couple was portrayed and I just really enjoyed that part of the novel. And I think that, you know, the book was really about that in a way. So yeah, I gave it a four stars because I thought it was very well written. It was like, the voice was very engaging. I didn't mind the format as much as many other people, but it, you know, it definitely wasn't a five star for me. The ninth book I read was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Now I really struggled during the first half of this book because it was mainly world building. Um, 
there was a lot of exposition, there were a lot of unnecessary characters, and honestly it felt very formulaic. I could see the twists and turns coming by where I was in the book, and it felt very much like Brandon was writing to a formula. However, I really loved the second half of the book, I got really invested in the characters and what was going to happen to them, and I really loved the twist and turns, even though I had predicted several of them from the very beginning, and I just really enjoyed it. I thought this was a really well done piece. I think I gave it a four star. There were some things that should have really been edited out. I didn't really understand some of the some of the choices that Samson made during the course of this novel, but I did really enjoy it, and I definitely will read more from Samson. The tenth book I read this month was The Gauntlet by Karuna Riazi. Uh, this was my choice for read any book by any Asian for the Asian Readathon. This is about a board game that sucks in four, uh, four children, three teenagers and a younger child or brother with ADHD and kind of like sucks them in Jumanji style and then they have to defeat the game in order to get out. I really enjoyed this, I thought it was very well written, it had a very fresh perspective, there was a lot of world building that I had to look up outside the book because it was very inspired by another culture and that maybe wasn't handled as well as a large expanse of sea, but I really did enjoy it, I thought it was a very well written uh, middle grade. The only critiques I would have is that the main character is the one solving most other puzzles, so it really felt as though her two kind of like sidekicks or the two other friends that went in with her were just there for the author to have some dialogue with and not necessarily to solve any puzzles. And I was really disappointed because I would have liked to see their strengths and weaknesses play into solving the other puzzles. Um, however, I did really enjoy the twists and turns, and yeah, I, I would recommend this book if you're looking for a middle grade of fantasy. And now, the 11th book I read was a J. Kristoff, and this was a Nevernight. I have read Illuminae before, which is by J. Kristoff and Maury Wilson, I believe, um, but I had not read J. Kristoff on his own. This is an adult fantasy about a young girl whose father is murdered, and then she goes and joins a, an order of priestesses learning how to be assassins. This is really similar to the Red to Red Sister, like incredibly uncannily similar. Very similar plot, very similar training. Um, I think J. Kristoff has put a lot more world building into his. Oh no, that's not fair. Both Mark Lawrence and J. Kristoff have put incredible amounts of world building, and the worlds are very different. Um, in Nevernight, there are three sons. Uh, very similar, in fact, to the three-body problem, only J. Kristoff's understanding of physics is a lot looser than Shishin's Liu's, and so we see the sun's kind of working, whereas in Shishin's obviously the three-body problem has not been solved and is very regular orbit-wise, but we ignored that because, you know, as a physicist sometimes you have to ignore science in fantasies. So in J. Kristoff's work we have, um, like I said, we have very different worlds in both J. Kristoff and Mark Lawrence's. I felt that J. Kristoff did this in a much better way. There was one storyline threaded through the whole book that definitely made sense. You ended up forgetting about some of the key um, key narrative points or key decisions because the characters did and then when they were brought up later as part of the twist or as part of conversation you were like oh yeah that did happen <gasps> or oh yeah that's such a good and clever solution to that problem so I found this book really good it took a while for me to get into it I would say the first hundred pages were painful but once I was in I was hooked and I cannot wait to read the second and third which is God's Grave I believe and then something or something like that I don't know um, I just felt that the world building, the characters, and just the way that it was told was really good. I have seen some of the narrative devices he used, like sarcastic world building footnotes before, in the Bartimaeus trilogy, and I would argue that that was done better or more naturally, but I still really enjoyed this one and I felt like the little bits of world building we got in the footnotes really added to the narrative, so I gave this one a five stars. The twelfth book I read in the month of March was the second volume of My Brother's Husband. This one I gave a five stars. It dealt with a lot more of the meat of the problem than the first book did, whereas the first book was mostly set up, the second book was definitely resolution, execution, uh, fighting, <laughs> opinions, everything was just kind of like mashed in there and it was super cute and super lovely and I just loved it, I adored it. So uh, full kudos to Gerogomi Tasame. This is what you get for not reading your notes. Gengoro Tagami. Full, full credit to Tengoro, see, Gengoro Tagami. He did a marvellous job in bringing to life this kind of like relationship between a foreigner, between a gay man, and just this Japanese family that kind of like embraced and accepted him. Ugh. I cried twice during the reading of that book, twice, two times. The 13th book I read was The Phantom Tollbooth. This is by Norton Juster and Jules Pfeiffer, these are both Americans. I gave this one a five star as well, although I did read it in archaic Swedish, so um, I'm sure that if you read it in English you will enjoy it a, maybe a lot more than I did. And uh, yeah, this is just a really cute middle grade, possibly children's uh, adventures in a different 
uh, a different fantasy world. So Milo, Milo, I think his name is, Milo is a bored child. He can't find any joy in anything to do. He never knows what to do with himself. And so when he comes home one day from school and finds a toll booth to assemble in his room, he just does it and drives through. Then he ends up in this magical land where lots and lots of wordplay is, is there from the authors. As I said before in my reading blog, there is a bee, like a man-sized bee called the spelling bee, who when he's talking, T-A-L-K-I-N-G, will spell the words. I just thought like the whole book is full of these kind of like twists and turns and moral lessons that are kind of like, they're not very well disguised, but they're really, really well done. Um, it made me think about my own life and the way that I do things. So for example, there is a, there is two twin cities. There is the city of reality and the city of illusion. And the city of illusion is much better well cared for than the city of reality, which no one can see anymore because no one put any time into maintaining it and making it a beautiful city because everyone was so focused on the city of illusion. That, my friends, is just perfection for me. I really love that book. The 14th book I read was A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, which is a book uh, edited by Elsie O and Ellen Chapman, I believe, although I might have got those names mixed up. This is a collection of 15 short stories which retell Asian, uh, Asian myths. I didn't really enjoy this, I think I gave it a three star. There were a few stories in there that really, really were well, well written, um, but for the most part I thought that they felt rushed and unpolished and they didn't really have like, I don't know, they didn't really speak to me in a way that the books normally do, they didn't suck me in. I think maybe that is a problem with the format of short stories, but it was also, like, I have read short stories that I've loved, these weren't them, unfortunately. This was the last book I needed for the Asian Readathon, and yeah, I just kind of like wanted to get it in there in May before, so that I could complete the full Asian Readathon prompts, all five of them, before the end of the month. The 15th book was to answer one of my bingo prompts which was a new release classic which I'm aware is just what um, but for this one I was going to read The Principles of Uncertainty unfortunately that isn't available on Kindle probably because it's a very mixed media book so instead I chose The Trial by Franz Kafka this is the story of a man who wakes up one day to find he has been arrested by a bureaucratic organization that will explain absolutely nothing to him including the reason that he has been in arrested um, and it doesn't interfere with his daily life that much except that he is constantly worried and preoccupied with it so we follow him throughout the trial, we see the various stages of his process, of his mental state as he goes through, and just kind of like, the confusion that I felt as a reader was the same confusion that the main character was expressing. There were long run-on paragraphs of just pure world building and conversation. It was a very hard book to read. Essentially in anal analysis of the text, people think that he is trying to ev evoke the feeling of living in Nazi Germany or pre-Nazi Germany through his work. It's very oppressive, it's very confusing, and it's just a very well written classic. The 16th and last book I read in the month of May was Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is supposed to be set in the same world as the fanfiction that uh, Kath is writing in Fangirl. And this is about two roommates, Simon and Baz. Simon is a kind of like the chosen one, but he can't control his powers as a mage. Whereas Baz is technically a vampire, though he can't admit that to anyone because he will have his canines removed and be thrown out of school because that's how they punish vampires in this world. Baz doesn't return to school and Simon is forced to figure out why, but also kind of like gets visited by this strange woman claiming to be Baz's mother or claiming to be someone's mother. And she is trying to get a message across that her murderer is still alive. So uh, Simon tells Baz this because, you know, it's Baz's mother and they go off and try and figure out who paid the vampires to come and kill her and turn Baz. Uh, along the way, they maybe develop a strong, like before they were enemies and now, hmm. Uh, this is a fluffy, light fantasy. It definitely doesn't add anything new to the genre. You can definitely see everything coming as you're reading, uh, but you do get multiple different perspectives and it, it does read a lot like a Harry Potter fanfiction. So if you're into Harry Potter fanfiction, I would recommend checking it out. That is it for the month of May. I hope you guys had an absolutely amazing reading month. Let me know if you read any of these in the comments down below and uh, yeah, I hope you find something great to read. I have lost the ninth book I read. Ah. Alright, that is it for the month of May. Nearly said March. Uh, so in total I read 16 months. Look, they believe in post-humorous post. Anyway, the dude's dead and you know they're analysing his work. Not a literacy analyzer, clearly. Um 